It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody. Starring the irrepressible Andrew Bernstein and the resilient Robert Begley. I am Andrew Bernstein, and you are indubitably Robert Begley. How you doing today, Robert? I'm doing great, Andy. And resilience is one thing today's episode is all about. Wow, what a story. Hey. Yeah, it's it certainly is. Let me hold up a copy of the of the book. Can I, is this is this mm -hmm. clear? I always have a hard time. Yeah, there, there, there you go. Thank you, Elliot. That looks good. The Long Walk by Slavomir Ravitz uh, was a Polish army officer, and I I strongly recommend this book to anybody. I would say go up on Amazon and get this book yesterday and read it. Because whether this is whether this is true story or fiction, this is one of the most heroic stories you'll ever read. Yeah, Andy, and you're you stood by your word because back in 2004, if you remember, uh -huh. inspired by your book uh -huh. Heart of a Pagan, I formed the New York uh, Hero Society to celebrate heroism, and you gave a copy of The Long Walk to each one of the principals: uh, Arshak, me, uh, George. Jim and Dennis. And then we did a walk. We read, we all read the book and then we did this walk up in the Catskills. That was a long walk and we had a, a discussion of the book. And thank God we that was have some to go time ago. Go we had to go through the Gobi <laughs> Desert though, right? <laughs> but I remember one funny. thing specifically you said. They, you said these guys didn't have North Face jackets. Remember, North Face was like the hottest new warm jacket. Yeah, that, right. I'll never forget that. So, right. so let's tell everyone what we're talking <laughs> about. The story here. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so let's, let's just let's just start with the with the controversy here. Uh, Slavomir mm -hmm. Ravitz was uh, you know Polish army officer uh, during World War II. He claims to have been you know in, imprisoned in the Soviet Gulag. But totally on false charges. They claimed he was a spy. He wasn't. He was an army officer. Yes. And then he and several, mm -hmm. uh, he and several of his friends. I, I, I don't ever like to use the word comrades when we're discussing communism and how evil it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ravitz and several of his friends then escaped from a Soviet gulag way up in the you know in northern Siberia, not far south of the Arctic Circle, in the you know, hundred miles near Winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred miles. Yeah, near mm -hmm. Winter's Ed brutally cold you know and then you know heavy snows and then they walked but it took about a year to walk uh to freedom in india so that i mean you know through three of the most brutal terrains on earth right siberian tundra the gobi desert and then the himalaya mountains now, there's a controversy about whether Ravitz claims this is a true story. There's a controversy about it because mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, when you claim to be telling the, the, the truth here, you, you look for authentication. And there's no, there is no verification forthcoming from, from Soviet archives you know, on, on this. But on the other hand, the Soviets were not no, noted to be meticulous record keepers. You know how many how many millions of people were, you know, were sent off to the gulags. You know we don't even know how many. So you know, like you said before the show, Robert, if I had to choose between you know believing Slavomir Ravitz or believing the communists, well, I'm going to believe Ravitz a hundred times out of a hundred. But there is controversy mm -hmm. over whether whether his claim uh, to truth here is is accurate. So, so let me take the worst case scenario. Roberts made this up, which means he's lying about it being truth. But we've never, you know, we've never shied away from criticizing heroes for, you know, for moral flaws. At the very worst, we could say this is a great novel, <laughs> the most one of the most <laughs> heroic novels you'll ever read. As the, I, I, you know, and I strongly recommend it. That's the worst case scenario, you know. The, yeah. the best case scenario is that he's telling the truth, uh, and this uh, and 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 this went down exactly as, as he said. Nobody knows, nobody knows for sure. But you know, you're right. I'm going to believe yeah. him because so I'm not going to take Soviet archives or Soviet records as you know as yeah. some kind of uh, you know truth over over Roberts's words because the Soviets were notoriously sloppy and dishonest mm -hmm. as you know they're mass murderers. Yes, <laughs> they're they're, they're yes. dishonest as can be. So you know so. So anyways, one thing I want so, to uh, discuss the controversy right up front. 
thank thank you andy so for our purposes we're going we're going to tell the story as it is as it's written in the book going through each right. parts of his journey and i'll start andy by saying one time when i was a teenager late teens i took the subway from south ferry in manhattan all the way up to 225th street and broadway and i walked the entire 13 miles down back oh, okay. to the South Ferry. So 13 miles was my longest walk. Not the same as 4,000 miles though. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a, just, you would, it's you a different New animal. York City. <laughs> and I'm in New York City. I've done New some York New York City, City marathons you know, in my life, but that's a little longer, but I jogging, remember once, but just walking. Mm -hmm. I remember once, you know, walking in, in Manhattan with my ex-wife and, you know, I said, well, you know, you know, we're gonna get thirsty or something. And she's, oh my, she says something, you know, something like, oh, horror is the, the nearest deli. It's gotta be at least three blocks away. You know, so, yeah. you, you know, yeah. if you needed a bottle of water, <laughs> it, wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be hard to get in New York City. And the Gobi oh, Desert, yep. on the other hand, uh, mm. well, we'll see, we'll see the, the consequences of trying to walk across, yeah. you know, the, the, the desert. And, and, and Robert also, so, he, he, mm -hmm. the worst possible timing, they escaped from Siberia in the winter, or the, uh, at, winter. The end, at the end of yeah. winter, but Siberian winter is long and brutal, uh, crossed the Gobi Desert in the summer, and then reached the Himalaya Mountains again as winter, you know, uh, uh, approached. So yeah. you know, they, they, yeah. too bad it wasn't reversed. Although if it, if it was summer in Siberia, they might they might not have been able to escape because the heavy snows covered you know it was it was a heavy blizzard when they escaped and the heavy snows covered their tracks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's set the context uh, from the beginning. Uh, Rawitz is yes. twenty four years old. He's an officer. Oh, yeah, we should give in his dates. We should give his dates, Robert. Yes, 1950 to two thousand and four, right? Nineteen fifty to two thousand and four, yeah. Right? Yeah, so he's 25 years old. He's, uh, Poland's getting it on both sides. 1939, yeah. this is. So Germany's on one side. Russia's coming in from the other side. He lived, he grew up right at the border of Russia. So he spoke fluently. And of course, this set him up to be accused of being a spy because that's what the Russians, they don't believe anybody in their right mind would ever want to learn their language except for the purpose of becoming a spy. And the, the, the first couple of chapters, all you, the, the, all that you see them doing is saying, sign your name, you tell us you are a Russian, you are a spy for, the Pol for, for Poland. And he keeps denying it and they torture him the water torture um he's in this little in this camp where the pants are too loose they have like pajamas to wear and there's no belt so the pants are too loose they would fall down if you didn't hold them up and and just psychologically the the point there is if you have to hold you can only now you only have one free hand to try to do anything because you're so obsessed with your pants not falling down they're doing water torture on him, you know, the, the classic drop on your forehead, depriving him of sleep, depriving him of, of um, space. He, you know, he's confined all these different types of psychological and physical made, torture. They made him live, in his, own, made him live in, his own, in his own feces, right? In the, in the cell? Yes. Oh, yes. God, in, in, the on top, now, on top but... of that. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Then you know, I was they, wanting to interject. He, what they let me interject for one second, yeah, Robert. Go ahead. Po Poland mm -hmm. is not well situated geographically. <laughs> you, no. you know, you have Germany <laughs> no. to your west and Russia to your east. It's, it's you know, it's not, it's bad. It's not good. Not, but, we but admire anyway. Pol the Polish who go out and flourish in life deserve as <laughs> as much praise as anybody on the planet because yeah, they have two of. 20th century's worst villains on each side of them. So he's, he refused to sign. Rawitz refused to sign this document because he knows if I sign this, basically I'm telling them I was a spy and they're going to kill me. They pour hot tar on his hand, on his signature hand. Then they ask him to do it with his left hand. He refuses, but then they basically tell him, okay, you're sentenced to 25 years in a labor camp in Siberia. Actually, they don't only say Siberia, they just pack them on a train, which he later learns is a Trans-Siberian uh, rail, Railway. Right. 
right, right. And, and let me let me just say let me just say a couple of things yeah. here. You're you're right. Mm -hmm. Labor camp is a euphemism, right? This is slavery. The, the yes. gulags, yes. The gulags are, are, you know, a, a mass of slave labor. All communist countries, with the communist China, still with the slave labor in the gulags. North Korea is a mass of slave, slave labor camp. You know, so we should, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, we we should get that out, out, out of the way right at, right at the outset. Plus, I got a joke. here. it's not funny, but it's a joke. You know, from from the dark humor from the Soviet gulags. Some new inmate is brought in you know and and the and the and the veteran inmates ask him well what how how long are you in for and the new guy says 20 years and the old guy said what did you do and the new guy says nothing and the old guy say that's impossible and the new guy says why and the old guy say because for nothing you only get 10 years <laughs> Justice, justice, right? But do it nothing. Mm -hmm. You only get ten years in a slave labor camp. Yeah, yeah. And on that train, on that long train ride, Andy. Similarly, people are packed, and there there are no facilities to to. There's no restrooms, so you have to do what your business standing up with other people. Can you imagine? Oh, you know, could you imagine what it smelled like in that job? Oh, oh God. Uh, for 3,000 miles, a train ride to – actually, Elliot, can you bring up the um, uh, the map, uh, the second image that we have? Which uh, So they're on this long train ride from Moscow to Siberia. It's the one to, to the left, uh, hugging the northern part. And – Robert's credits, you just told the joke, Andy, he credits the comedians in the group who were still able to keep their the humor. I mean, they're cracking all these Soviet jokes, you know, one poor right. person, they find that he's died in the snow and the Soviet officers are taking the clothes off of him. And and the, and <laughs> what is it, one of the comedians, Father Stalin only loaned the poor bastard the clothes for the duration of his stay in the USSR. He won't need it for <laughs> any clothes for the next journey. <laughs> and this has people cracking up on, on the train because they, the situation oh, is just, it's hopeless. So Roberts is giving credit to these people for boosting spirits by at least, you know, coming up with some jokes. Three thousand miles later, they make it. To... Yeah. By, by the way, we should we should point out this is a yeah. great map because mm -hmm. we can point out the the east west line is the train journey. Look at the north yes. south line. That's the walk. <laughs> that's they the walked walk. longer than they oh. took a train yeah. ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, yep. it's exactly. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, you sorry, can find sorry, this. Sorry. You just do a long walk search, and you see that that's where I found this map from from a description yeah. uh, of the book. So they are, um, everyone is, even though many of them are, are Polish, <clears throat> no, people are afraid to, to speak up because it's just the conditions are, are just ridiculous. And the commandant comes out and basically, you know, tells them, behave or you're going to die. All right. And you guys and, look and, like yeah, sad. And he, and, and, and he could say, you know, with, with full truth, if you behave, you'll die also because the yes. which you're inside yes. you're in slave labor camp in Siberia. But we should say, Rob, before we get there, so that you get the three thousand yeah. mile train ride, you know, on the Trans Siberian Railroad. Then you get off the train. Then you gotta walk. This is this was the first walk. This is the short walk, right? Yes. It was only like what was it, a thousand yeah. miles. How many miles did they walk yeah. from the I mean, it's it's you see it on you, you see it on the map, but it's four thousand. That four thousand north to no, south, the, mm -hmm. the four thousand to, to freedom. But when they walk yes. from the Trans Siberian Railroad to the camp, that you can see mm -hmm. it on the map. It's the yeah, it's the, yeah. It's the north south. It's the north south line uh, line that that you know that's parallels to the east west. Yep. Yeah, and, and parallels mm -hmm. parallels the north south line of the of the long walk. I don't know. I don't know. It's hundreds of miles at least, maybe a thousand miles. Yes. In the, in the Siberian winter, in brutal snow, they had they they didn't have the clothing <clears throat> for it. They had no shelter, you know, at, at night no. from the wind and the snow. Oh, I was that, that 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 to me was the worst of it. Was that walk yeah. from the Trans Siberian Railroad to the camp before before they mm -hmm. ever escaped to freedom? Once they got to the camp, mm -hmm. they built a hut. They built huts, you know, and they were they were yes. able to get out of the wind, you know. Uh, and anyway, 
Yeah. But, oh my and God. countless people uh, died on that walk yeah. because they're not, I mean, if you were not physically strong and mentally strong, you, it's very simple. You were not going to make it. So this one commander yeah, and even, is even telling if you them, were, even if you were, you might, you might die. These conditions you're are right. so yeah. horrendous. You increase your odds. Yeah. You, you, you yeah, increase oh, yeah, your odds, sure. but, but For as sure. we'll see, even that's not a guarantee. So the commander says to them, behave or die. And he says, we have a library here with books to correct your thinking. Okay. <laughs> How about that? So don't, don't, yeah. don't even think, you know, Marxism is right. It's just getting, you know, it's gaining traction here in, 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 in the, uh, this is 1939 we are. And then he says, you look like savages. Any questions? And one guy says, how can we look any different? You go, you won't feed us. You won't shave us or no soap, no clean clothes. And he says one more word. And that's, uh, you know, to the, to the back of the line, you know, <laughs> then one other guy says, when does spring, when does spring start? <laughs> and he's like, don't ask just, stupid questions. <laughs> you know, you know, I gotta say, I gotta say, uh, first of all, I love, I love this book. Uh, but there, there was a movie made of it, right? Peter Weir directed it yes. with, Ed, with Ed Harris. Peter Weir, and, uh, yep. Jim, mm -hmm. Jim Sturgis played. Played Roberts, different name in the yes. movie, but it's Jim. Uh, and I thought the movie was pretty good, although the book is, you know, I think is out, you know, much better. It's, it's outstanding. But I gotta say, Robert, I just watched it like a week ago, uh -huh. or maybe ten days ago. So it's it's late winter in New York, and I'm yeah. lying in bed at night. You're watching the movie on Amazon Prime. It's twenty degrees outside, not twenty, not mm -hmm. forty below zero, but twenty degrees right. Fahrenheit. It's cold enough. And I'm under the covers and, I, and the heat's on in you know, my apartment. I'm all calm. And I'm, and I'm watching this movie. The movie was oh, my God. You know, Siberia. Yeah. <laughs> then the Gobi Desert. And, you know, and, you know, and then the <laughs> Himalayas. And I think, oh, God, thank God. You know, I'm here. It's warm. You know, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not snowing in here. It's not 40 below. Can you imagine what the wind chill must be in Siberia in, yeah. in the winter? The You know, it's, it's, I can't. And these guys had, didn't have the right... Uh, Anyhow, yeah. I said, "Yo, I no said, North you face watch the film. jackets. Yeah, don't yeah. North face jackets. But um, <laughs> you watch, you watch the movie version, and you know, I I don't think the story is as good as in the book, but it, it's a very, film is a very visual genre. It puts you in this setting, and you really yes. really feel the brutal cold of the Siberian winter, the terrible heat." Of the go, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and dehydration in the go, they're suffering in the Gobi Desert. You really, you really experience mm -hmm. what these what these guys went through, you know, in, the, in their yeah four thousand mile walk to freedom. I, anyway, so I, I would recommend the film, but I think the book's a lot better. Yeah, I gave a Carrie Ann a bookmark. It says, "Never judge a film by its book." <laughs> And that's, or never, or never that's judge, where was it never judge was it never judge a book? I'm by sorry, never film. judge a book by its film. Yeah, I'm sorry, I misquoted yeah, okay, that. Yeah, yeah that, makes, so, that makes sense. And the point that the point there is read the book first. Okay, it's easily available, uh, and the audio book I have I've listened to many times. So one turning point, Andy, a different commissar. Yeah. He reports to the people in the field. We have a radio that's broken. Does anybody know how to fix a radio? And Rawitz raises his hand. He remembered as a kid, he knew the exact model that they had, goes into this tiny little home, meets the wife, and Rawitz is fiddling around with it. He can't fix it the first day. He has to come back. Then he realizes, I'm not going to, I'm going to take my time fixing this thing. This is, yeah, right. I'm liking these surroundings here, you know? And the people like me. And the wife starts asking him, you know, have you ever thought of escape? And he's like, whoa, is <laughs> she setting me up yeah. here? And he tells yeah. her he's in for 25 years. And she says, you're only 24, 25 years old. You, you, the thought must have crossed your mind. And they build, they build this bond because she, the, this commissar was there. I'll give you a second to jump in, Andy. He, he was there as some kind of punishment. Like who wants to work in Siberia, even, you know, even if you're a, an officer. So something went wrong. He probably wasn't enough of a Marxist, you know, that they, they banished him to this position right. uh, in the middle of right. nowhere. And so the wife has some empathy for, for some of these soldiers and they strike up a relationship, uh, Rawitz and uh, the wife. And then finally she says, if, 
you know, if you're considering escaping, I can help. Yeah, you know, it, I was, um, it struck me, it struck me, mm -hmm. it struck me as, uh, as I was reading. Mrs. Kamazaw turns out to be a good person, right? I mean, you Absolutely. know, and, you know, and I, yeah, Absolutely. And I, yeah, and I, yeah, and I feel for her because she's married to her yes. husband. Hopefully they have a good relationship. He, like you said, he gets punished by being sent off to Siberia and she's got to go with him. And it's just dreary, yeah. dreary at best, brutal at, at worst. Uh, yep. and so, so she's yeah. stuck there. But yeah, she's got, you know, she's got a heart. I don't know if she's a communist or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably not. She's she's got. A she good has empathy. Heart. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 And, and Ushakova. She helps, she helps her. You, you, yeah. Right. Ushakova is is her name. And once Rawit sees there's a chance, he spreads the word. To he's already bonded with a few of the Polish. Um. What's the term? The refugees or yeah, the army. Or, they're, they're, army you know, the one, they're army guys. You know. Prison, yeah, yeah, the the army Polish guys, army guys were, 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 were prisoners. Prisoners, yeah, they're prisoners actually. Yeah, so he bonds with with them, and one by one, they they find five different people, different backgrounds, different skill sets, who say, "I'm in, I'm in, I'm in." The sixth one, one of the one of the ones, uh, tells Rawitz, "I think Mr. Schmidt would be interested too." And Mr. Schmidt sees them coming towards him and he says, my name is Mr. Smith. I'm an American. And yes, I'm in. And they're, all of their jaws drop. They're like, what is an American doing in this lot? Uh, and then he tells them the background that he was working on the Moscow uh, Railroad. Uh, he was getting well paid. And then they accused him of being a foreign spy and sent him uh, to Siberia. He was in, I think, year five of this um, of, of being in Siberia. And they asked, "Have did you ever consider escaping?" And he said, "Every single day, but I know I can't do it alone." So here, Andy, is an important right. thing: is the idea of teamwork. This is too; it's too difficult to get out there on your own. Oh, yeah, ab ab absolutely. And uh, mm -hmm. Smith. Yes, yeah, Smith was a was an American engineer that the you know the Russians yeah. hired to help, like you said, to help build the the railroad. So, so you bring in these guys to do an important job for you. You pay them well, and then you just make this stuff up. You know that you know that yeah. that he's a spy, and and you sent him you know to years and years in a, in a slave labor camp. It just shows the the vicious insanity of the communists. Everyone you know, who was in past. there was was for. Well, everyone who was in there, Andy, was accused of being a spy. That was like the common, you know, right? Just the, and, the and, 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 no, and nobody, and nobody who was in there was a spy, <laughs> right? That's the thing. right. Everybody right. was accused of being a spy. Nobody was. It's all, it's mm -hmm. all vicious, you know, uh, insanity on the part of the communists. But it's interesting in the yeah. story. They ask, they ask him his first name. Smith, his first name, and he says, Mr. And we never find That's out. Right. He, bonds, he bonds with Robbins and these guys. And even at the end, we never find out his, you know, his first name is, yeah. is Tom or, you know, or whatever. We, That's we right. Never, we never, we never he out. never divulges that. He's yeah. older. He right. said, uh, Robbins thinks he's around 50 years old because he's got a graying beard. And, uh, and one of the, one of the six, now they're seven. One of them is named Zaro and he's a comedian. He's he's the one right. that's always cracking jokes, and then he, the reason he says he's in is like the Russians don't appreciate my sense of humor, so I might as well I might as well leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 and you're you're right when you when you uh, undergo the most brutal physical conditions that that these guys do to have somebody like that who can lighten the lighten the mood like that is you know it, yeah. is it, invaluable. Mm -hmm. It's a, it, it's enormously yeah. important. And so they're small. They know they, of, know they have. They, they, you know, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I was going to say a couple of the materials that the that the wife gives them: uh, an axe, a knife, uh, some kindling for fire. Because knowing they're going to be out in the elements, you need materials. You can't just walk out there with with nothing. Uh, they're packing on. You know, over time, this doesn't happen. She doesn't say day one, and then they uh, they plan the escape day two. She she says. My husband's going away um, in a couple of weeks. It ha he, you can't escape while he's on guard here. 
So basically they know they have a short window when the husband is away yeah. for them to escape. Right. And, and they have to, they have to store up some food, you know, they, they, they take their, yeah. their food rations and they store st some for the walk. And also they know mm -hmm. they, they need, it's, it's late winter. I and mean, I don't know when spring yes. comes to Siberia, but, uh, they have to escape in the winter you know, in during a during a snowstorm yes. and it, it's it's their best chance because it, yes. the heavy snows will will cover their tracks and that's yeah. uh, you know yeah. and, and and that's what they do right yeah exactly they, and uh, to, in this sense it worked to their advantage uh, yeah, you know right. uh, where it it would blur the vi you can't see very far the guards can't see very far so they they set a time they wanted to be uh late in the evening like around midnight or so and they make their move and there's barbed wire there's you know one of the one of the bigger guys gets stuck in, in the barbed wire and he's like i hope they don't leave me here and sure enough no they come they 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 let him go through and they're now andy the thing they fear most is the wind exactly what you were mentioning before the gusts right. of wind <clears throat> they can't stop. They just have to keep moving and they're waiting for the sound of the dogs. You know, they, they assume they're being chased. And so now they're listening for the sound of dogs and all they hear is wind. <clears throat> so they just keep going. Yeah, they know, they, well, all they, they know. They, 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 they escape you know, like midnight. I don't know what time in the morning they get these guys up for, uh, you know, their very skimpy breakfast and then yes. put them to slave labor. Right. But they have X number of hours, you know, before yes. it'll be discovered that, that they've uh, yeah. escaped. And they know they have to put it, even in the heavy snows, it's, it's hard to walk in snow, never mind run, you know, uh, if it's up to your knees. Yep. But uh, uh, they know they have to put as much distance between them as the camp, as, as they can. You know, before they're discovered, they run. You know, they're running to get yeah. try to put miles between them and the camp. And yes. and one one advantage, well, several there's, there's several pieces of good news here, and that is, if they went east to try and get to Japan, it would be a much shorter trip. And uh, they, as Roberts and and the rest suspect, that's what the Soviets would expect them to do to go east. To go south, you know, it's a thousand yes. miles just to get to <clears throat> Mongolia. You know, never mind four thousand miles yeah. to, to get to, to British, still, yeah. still British controlled India. So they, 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 you know, they head south. Uh, so that that's an advantage. And then, of course, it's heavy when, when it snows that heavily. When in, in in a very short period of time, your footprints are, are covered, so they wouldn't be able to track them yeah. that way. Uh, so there's yeah. there's two things they have they have go have gone for them. Uh, if you know, if we could even put it right. that positively. But yeah, I would yeah. I would do the same and, thing. I would I would rather die trying to escape than die as a slave in a gulag. So you know. yeah, that was the the total consensus. Right. But Andy, even if you think about Japan, what what did Japan look like? And now we're into yeah, right. 1940. <laughs> that's not right. that's a different kind of dictatorship, but it's still a dictatorship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's yeah, that's yeah, that's point. not good paradise. Point, right. Mm -hmm. right. So they cross right. uh, the Lena River. Uh, eight solid days of jogging, just going south. They don't know where the, they don't even know where the ultimate destination is. It, the the first plan is right. get out and go south, and they start to see the, the difference Union. in yeah. the terrain. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get and out they of the start camp to see and get slight out of the Soviet Get out of the Soviet Union. Go ahead. Yeah, and finally they they um, of course now they're starving and they don't. There's nothing. Uh, you know, there's no real food around, but they hear uh, fortune, f you know, favored them on this journey. And this poor deer is stuck in a fence oh, yeah. and is is exhausted because the deer has been stuck in the fence for ages. And sure enough, they, you know, they put it out of its misery real fast. They cook it, and they their stomachs go from just like stuck you know stuck to their ribs to them being completely full and then they have a decision like what do we do now there's still too much of this deer left and they say let's just eat let's just keep eating let's just stay another 24 hours and just keep eating until we only have to carry a little bit of the yeah. uh, remainder of the deer with us so this total extreme andy from from bordering on starvation to being completely full and now having to lug, you know, lug this uh, food with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they continue. And now we get to another pivotal uh, point where 
they make it into uh is it mongolia when they when they meet the girl well yeah but but, but, but uh, no, no they're, they're lake, still it was lake baikal it was lake baikal in still in still in russia yes. still okay in siberia yeah. yeah and 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 they, that's right they some, somebody somebody is you is, tell that part trailing about... them yeah yeah some mm -hmm. and and they accost this person who's been trailing them and they realize uh you know it's a it's a girl well katrina i think her name was or, or karina i i, I forget. Yes. uh uh christina but, Christina, okay, Christina yeah. with a K. Christina, mm -hmm. <clears throat> right, right. Uh, uh, Christina, and you know she's a Polish girl. Her parents have been been killed by the communists. She was sent to a, you know, to a slave labor camp, and you know, and and, and she escaped. And then they they they, they debate, you know, she and she's kind of um, uh, a little bit, little bit frail, maybe I don't know, but she's she's certainly petite, very slender. They don't know, they don't know, you know, she's she's dainty. You know, uh, and had needed for two days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. you know, can she keep up with us? Will, will she slow us down? But you know, they decide yeah. they we can't leave her here. You know, to be recaptured yeah. by the Soviets and probably killed, executed, murdered yeah. by them. For, you know, for well, here to Andy, so, it's so important they let, here let, her, let, her, let her go with them. Right? Yeah, they let her go let, with them. Let her come along. Smith the, the, here's where Smith was different from the rest. He was different in so many ways. But here, the other ones were Polish, and they saw she was a Polish girl. So they were like, she's come with us. But Smith had to debate. You know, he, he had to consider, like, first of all, does she want to come with us? Will she slow us down? Will What are the pluses and minuses here? And she sensed that resistance. Uh, with him and all the rest of them were like she's definitely come she's like a younger sister we you know we care yeah, for her right. and and she yeah, warmed right. up to them then, right away once they started speaking polish and then uh smith says yes you're coming with us can you swim that's the first thing he asked her can you swim because that that will likely be part she's like oh absolutely i was in school i was like the top swimmer and then they start to bond yeah. you know it's amazing right <laughs> Yeah, no, you know, it's it's great stuff. But also, you know, gets like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm reading the book again. It's the it's the winter, and you know, I'm lying in bed, the mm -hmm. comfortable, the heat's on, and I'm and I'm thinking, you gotta swim the river in Siberia. I mean, there, you know, it, it's in in the winter. Can you you know how cold that water is gonna yeah. be? And then when you get out, you're dripping wet. The wind's yeah. blowing. It's oh my god, yeah. they don't have any <laughs> spare clothes or any towels, you know, any anything. No. You swim there, swim the river, and let's keep walking. Yeah. You know, it's zero degrees <laughs> Fahrenheit. The wind chills twenty. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, we could do this. <clears throat> and these guys are tough, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know how yeah. many. I don't know how many rivers they swam. You know, in these extremely cold conditions to keep heading right. south. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah and here's, here's some of the I'll advantages. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, I was no, going to no, say we'll, some we'll of the advantages to... of now having a, a a girl with them is that now it changes the whole mood in case they're they're caught, they're found. And this is what happens uh, several times during the next part of the journey is if you see seven uh, savage looking men, some are really big, even if they're not, you know, and one has an axe, there, there's a threat there. If you see them with a girl it changes the whole mode and that's that's what happens that's right. they see a, a a man and his son and he brings them in he invites them uh you know they're right. bordering on starvation and he invites them in feeds them they say they're escaping and he's like wow times have changed normally i would have food you know i would have be ready for you and ha have stuff prepared but now you're coming without like without me even knowing and they ask you know who is this woman and and smith effectively says you know she's like my daughter now and he's promising to right. bring her to america and give her instead of these heavy boots that she has that are way too big and giving her blisters it's like oh i'm gonna have you you know wearing pretty dresses and and just really yeah. changing the mood having this girl with them if they start to clean up and wash their clothes because she's the first one that does that herself so it's just a beautiful right. part of this journey that she adds yeah you're, uh, you're right that they, they both add to each other christina's a real sweetheart i mean you know she's just a yeah. she's just yeah. a real good-natured child well, she's 17 i think she's, she's a very yeah. good-natured person she bonds she talks with all the guys and she bonds with them and yeah they, you know they're, they're, they're some of them are not that much older than her they're 25 or 
28 or 30. But, you know, they're married. Yeah. They're adults. You know, she, she's yeah. still a, you know, she's still a teenage girl. And you're right. They regard her, the, the young guys regard her as, as their little sister. And Smith regards her as his daughter. And it's very, very, yeah. it's very, very touching and makes what, what's to come. Super protective. Very, very, they, very, very, very sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, and, yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, and you're right. You know, Christina goes off by herself when, you know, when they take a break near a river or something and she, she's fastidious. She washes. Yeah. And they say, yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah, that's not a bad idea. You know, you know, maybe we should, maybe we should. <laughs> and we she should comes out looking them. pretty. She comes it's out looking pretty, pretty yeah. and, and pretty. Smith finds, finds flowers and gives them to her, you know, like you, you look like this, this little gem here, you know, and, and so they make it to Mongolia. Now they cross the border. So they're out of. Well, for, for, yeah, for, first they cross the, the, the Trans-Siberian Railroad. Right. First, they got to cross yes. the railroad, which is guarded by the Soviets. So they have to do it at it slip across at night. Then they get to the border. You're right. right. I don't know. It's a few hundred miles, a few hundred miles south. Uh, and it's it's spring by this time. So it's not brutally cold. Thank God, you know. And then they get to the Mongolian mm -hmm. border, which is unguarded. Right. They just, they just, as I remember, they could just walk across into Mongolia. It's unguarded. Uh, people's homes. There's no fences. People welcome. You could just walk in, knock on somebody's doors. And they a complete different mindset, you know, with the with the Mongolians. They they just yeah, complete, basically they, com they come Robert, up on a house. Just, yeah. So it's completely different from the Soviet Union. It's also completely different from Genghis Khan. You know, this you know, uh, yeah. the, the Mongols. <laughs> yes. back, the Mongols back in the day, Genghis Khan, Tamerlane, some yeah, of these they, brutal conquerors. They they they, they were not sweethearts. Yes. That's that is certainly true. That is, that is certainly true there. So, uh, so they come on one place where uh, a village, and they see the 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 man who owns you know this one this one house that's that's tiny, but uh, he invites them in, and the wives are cooking. And they realize we have to do some work for these. They have a lot of property, a lot of land, and. Why don't we chop down, chop some wood for these people, and and so they can make a fire and do these. So in other words, they're not freeloading, you know. Even though people are showing generosity and they don't have very much, this is not this is not Kansas, you know, where where there's so much you know abundance yeah, around here. They don't have very it's much. It's not a, it's but, not America. It's not America. No, no, it's not America. No, it's Mongolia. <clears throat> so they, you know, they they're like. Hey, we have to work for these people, you know, and and dinner's not ready, so we have time. And they go out, you know, they chop down a tree, they they do all these different things that it's a mutually beneficial uh, encounter here that lasts for for several hours. They pack them off. Oftentimes, they'll stay the night, and then the the hosts will give them food for the day, and then they'll just pack off early uh, to go. Next day, they see this incredible, uh, in the distance, this cloud of what they think is dust getting get, getting closer to them, and they can't get away. And then they realize it's locusts. So, so now we're not even dealing with the elements, Andy. We're going with locusts. Is this the Bible or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's an Old Testament story. Yeah, we got plague and locusts and floods and everything. God knows, God knows what. Yeah. <laughs> so they, but they, they cover up, right? Amazing. And they survive. They cover they, up. They yeah. Yeah. They, they do. They definitely do. Uh, they do survive. Now they make it to the toughest part, the Gobi Desert. Uh, here we are, you know, heat, drought, and death. You know, it's a chapter yeah, and it's, uh, 16. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, it took months to get here. So they, they, it's summer. And there's the worst time it's to summer. try and cross, you know, yeah. cross the desert. It's yeah. God knows what the, mm -hmm. they went from, you know, probably I'm just making up the numbers, but probably in the ballpark, 40 below zero wind chill. And now you're in the yeah. desert, it's probably over a hundred, you know, during hundred degrees Fahrenheit during, mm -hmm. during the, the sun just pitilessly beating down on it's funny you know these yeah. guys are they're really mm -hmm. suffering I, I was thinking what i'm reading there robert and carrie ann are probably the two people who would enjoy this part of the trip you know sure we would <laughs> it's we definitely would. it looks like death valley you know it's like 120 <laughs> degrees you know in the mojave desert sign me so, up i'm in <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i would have died 
to be desert. I don't know if I would have survived the winter, but you know, uh, Siberia. Mm. But that that, that kind of mm-hmm. heat prostration that that would have you know that would have killed me. I couldn't tolerate that. But yeah. anyhow, be that as it may. So water is the main problem, right? You're dehydrated. Yes. You need water at any yeah. time when you could live like maybe three or four days without water, even under good conditions. Mm-hmm. But in that kind mm-hmm. of heat. And you're and you're walking, you know, you're it's, it's through, through through sand, which is strenuous, uh, and they don't mm-hmm. have any water. Uh, and, and, and the Gobi Desert, I don't know what its extent is, but it's it's a, it's a big, you know, it, it's not a small place. Yeah, it's, hard, yeah, it's hundreds of no. miles at least across the desert. They don't have any water. They don't have any. Mm-hmm. They don't have canteens or anything to carry, you know, water. Yeah. In. Well, fortunately, they find they find an oasis, right? Trees, yeah, they and, see trees in the distance, and they say, "Where there's trees, there's water," and they just yes, sprint that, to this place, and they're just, yep, they're just sopping it up and and just getting, re, you know, rejuvenated with this water, and unfortunately, it's not, it's short lived because once they head out again, poor yeah. Christina, this is and, by you know, far Robert, the most know, tragic Roberts, part. Yes, Roberts makes a good point. Some of them want to stay at the oasis, you know, because they have water. Which is the key element yeah. of life, anyway, mm-hmm. especially in the middle of the desert. Uh, yeah, and uh, he says mm-hmm. we don't have any food. You know, a caravan may come at some point, but it's not. It's not like a well-regulated, you know, train schedule. They don't come on any. They time just day. missed one. Uh, yeah, they just yeah, missed right. the caravan. And, mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. They just missed one. So maybe a month before another yeah. one comes. We don't know. There's no food. Mm-hmm. Roberts points out. If we wait too long, we'll be too weak to continue. We 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 have to. Yeah. we have to chance it. You know, guzzle up as much water as we can because part of the tragedy is they don't have any canteens. You know, they just have a cup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if, they, had, if yeah. they all had canteens, you know, then then they could you know bring some water with them. But they uh, could yeah. you know guzzle as much water as you can and then carry a, in a little cup and 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 sip from it for days. Right, and then. Yeah, yeah then they, the tragedy the tragedy strikes yeah just before that any on, on the caravan they had realized one had just left because there was still there was sl- a tiny bit of meat on these bones that they found That's right, a, yeah. a, a little like fire and they the the bones they just <laughs> took everything they could out of that i mean and that was like the their their sustenance over the next period so yeah why don't you why don't you tell us uh uh, the next yeah, so they, you know, they continue, the <clears throat> they continue south, uh, you know, through the desert and uh, Christina keeps falling and, you know, she rolls up, mm-hmm. uh, takes off her boots and rolls up her pantry and her, her, her ankles and her calves are just all swollen. And, and I was reading, yeah. I didn't know the medical condition. I, I, I don't think it's that dehydration was, you know, is it heat prostration? Is it some kind of, I don't know, but, you know, yeah, she, she's game. She's she you know, she's plucky. She she keeps going. At t- at times they carry her, but it, but then eventually she passes away, and um, it's heartbreaking because everybody loves her. Yep. The reader, the, the as as the as the reader. Now I love her. You know, she's, you know she could be she could be my kid's sister or my daughter. You know, yeah. also, and it's just mm-hmm. heartbreaking when Christina dies, and they, and they they have to bury yeah. her in the desert. Yeah. He says one line. He says, seven men cried openly because the most precious thing was taken from them. And of course, they're beating themselves up, right? We're responsible. But no, Mr. Smith says, gentlemen, it's no use blaming ourselves. She was happy with us. Okay? Yeah, well, and, and future he without says that. goodbye What's in that? English. For, yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, go ahead. No, I said, what was her future yeah, without just, them? Exactly. She had no future. She had no parent. Her parents were killed and she was on the run. She was going to be raped. I mean, that was, we didn't even say the reason she escaped was one of the guards where she was is with all these, you know, plumpy Russian women. And she was this little petite Polish girl and he wanted it for herself. And she fled for. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, know, it's it's bad bad enough, you know, to be caught in a totalitarian state. But if you're an attractive woman, it's 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 doubly oh, worse gosh. because because yeah. they will yeah. they will rape the hell out of you before they before yeah. they kill you. Uh, uh, so, so sad, so sad. sad. Yeah, yeah. So so she uh, the she last right. word. She had, she had no future. And and he says one word goodbye in English, and that's the only time during the trek that he used he speaks in English. So you could see how dear she was to him, where he's reverting to his 
proper language. You know, that's how that's how moved he is. I mean, oh, all seven of them were, but be, especially the others who bonded with her from from the Polish side. But Smith adopted her as his daughter to bring her to America. I mean, that was clearly on his mind. And uh, so, yeah, so now they're, you know, they're still in the Gobi and now they're one less, you know, and, and so now what do you do? What are the options? Snakes. Keep walking, they keep see walking snakes. south. Oh yeah, they, that's what <laughs> and they, they the And snakes, they're like, right? oh, the only thing alive are snakes. <laughs> and Smith is like, well, in America, in the American West, the native Indians, they would eat snakes. So what do you, what do you say? Then well, what about the poison? Well, if you chop off the head, the poison's like in the top of, you know, top of the head. So they catch yeah. snakes and they start eating them. And they say snakes saved us in the snakes of the Gobi saved us from death. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Eating snake. And what yeah. are they drinking? Yeah. Uh, when, they, when, they, uh, when they cook it, it tastes like chicken. He said. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, but near the snakes, there's a snakes. There, there, yeah. and, and what do you wash it down with? There was no, there was no water. There was mud. So they start dipping like their clothes in mud and sucking on the, you know, you know, the, the material. And <clears throat> sure enough, they all each one by one, they all get sick. And they're not sure, is it the snake or is it the mud? And well, both. fortunately, you're, you're, uh, they do, well, both. well, they do find more snakes and they realize a couple of days later that it wasn't the mud. It wasn't the snakes. It was actually the mud. <clears throat> yeah. The that, four that gave, uh, them, gave them, you know, they were sick to yeah. their stomach, you know, and, and, and everything. So yeah, they, they, they eat the snakes and keep, keep walking south and eventually south. they get, they get, yeah, they eventually somebody else okay. dies in the desert isn't there, isn't there one of the men yeah. who dies in the desert one of the other ones yeah because only six of them make it to tibet uh i can't remember which one but yeah he i can't either these, these people can't in their either. 20s you know where you think you would have the most energy and the most strength hmm? it's taken away you know it's just it's just by, taken by these away conditions and, i mean yeah if we had to walk four thousand <clears throat> miles you know on flat terrain in the spring uh it would still be hard, but yeah. to do it, you know, in Siberia in the winter, the Gobi Desert in the summer, and, and if we were well provisioned, mm -hmm. it would still be hard. It would still be taxi on, on many yep. people's mm -hmm. energies. But to, to do it with, without provisions, without water in the desert through the Siberian winter, the, the Gobi <sighs> Desert summer, the, only the strongest of the strong. You know, are going to survive this. Yeah, this is just. Yeah, this is this is a test. Uh, to say it's a test of endurance is is a is an understatement. Th th yeah. this is absolutely this is a hellish a hellish journey. And these guys keep going, mm -hmm. and they make it to Tibet. The, the, the good news and the bad the news. Bet. You know, <laughs> the good news. Well, there's a lot of good news. You know, they're out of the desert. They survived the desert. They're a long way from the yeah. Soviet Union. But the bad news is even the the, the Himalayas loom they at some point they decided we got to get, yes. get to india you know which is still controlled yeah. by the british uh you know, lhasa so, was so the we, first goal there's this uh town of lhasa and then event let's get the there city. first the holy yeah. the holy so, Buddha city in Tibet, right it's a, that's right uh, that's right bad news so let's add one other thing india, the himalayas the himalayas looming our path oh my there's god one, i mean I can't. one other thing they're fighting gandhi which is lice <laughs> Okay. Oh my God, On top of walls, oh, yeah. they have lice and they're scratching and they're like this and that. And at ah. one point, they burn all their clothes. And they're like, "You guys deserve this, you know?" They're yeah, they're like, hey, yeah. Take, take burn, her. burn you little <laughs> bastards. Yeah, oh, yeah. Imagine, imagine being consumed by lice for months on end, and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh my God, uh. the, the horror, the horror <laughs> yeah. of this. Let me say one point before we get to the Himalayas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that is, I was thinking when I was reading the book, because you know I, uh, these guys didn't feel safe until they got to India. So, so I'm thinking, were the, were the Soviets actually pursuing them? I, I mean, I think the wise, the wise thing to believe was yes. So we got to keep going, but the truth is probably no. My guess is this. Yeah, I don't think and so. this is just guesswork. But I know, but I know how I know how totalitarian mind works. They probably looked east. Mm -hmm from the camp thinking they went that way because that was the shortest way. Couldn't find it, obviously did, didn't find them. Uh, came back to the other prisoners and, and told, you know, the guards were instructed to lie. We found their bodies. 
you know, in the snow and all we shot them. Yeah. They're all dead. That's what's going to happen to anybody who tries to escape. And I'll bet you anything. The com- they're, they're in this isolated place in Siberia. I bet the commandant never reported it to, to headquarters because he doesn't want to know. Yeah. They're, 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 yeah. He doesn't want them to know that some guys escaped and we never found their bodies. They, they probably, you know, the commandant probably never even reported it. So I'm guessing the Soviets, mm-hmm. they're, they're long gone. They're written off as dead. You know, and and you know, and and these guys—they probably never even pursued them, other than, you know, a, a cursory search in, in in the immediate environs of the camp, uh, and you know, mm-hmm. and, and probably didn't pursue them any further. That'd be my guess, anyway. I think that's probably what happened. Although, I think so. If, yeah. You know, if if all, although for us escaping, we would you know, would von Clausewitz say you? It's always better if you have to air to overestimate your enemy than underestimate him. So I, I think yes. the, I think the, the the wise the wise judgment on their part is they're after us. Let's keep going. Yeah, we, yep. we can't stop. And w- one of the things, Andy, as they go farther south, <clears throat> everyone who they meet opens them, greets you know, opens their doors, gives them their home, serves them you know tea or whatever part you know paltry amount of food that they have. And at one point, one of them says, these people have respect for human life, not like the place we came Soviets, from. Right. You not know, like the Soviets. They, they right. know the difference. They know the difference between respecting human life. It's not like this gang of now there's, there's only five of them left. They're coming in to take, you know, to take, they're starving and they're going to take by force. Uh, they did kill one pig at one point that they kind of felt bad about of, of somebody's uh, stock. but. You know they were they were, they were starving, they were starving. They were starving. and they, and they didn't yeah. and they didn't attack the people you know the owners uh you know there's one guy they they took his gun you know early on they, they an old man they actually took his gun and they had to hide it you know a couple of miles away because they feared you know he he, he would shoot them you know and so yeah. but the the difference in yeah, and they in left the, it the they left it for human him. life they, you're, you're right. yes they, they left they it told for him. him they would leave it for him and they did you know, a few miles away, yeah. so he, so the guy could, yeah. the guy one, the guy could recover yeah. the gun, but two, he mm-hmm. couldn't shoot them because they were long gone. But mm-hmm. so yeah, they, they were they were as respectful, you know, of of the natives in in Russia or any place else, you know, that that, that they could. Yeah, do. yeah. One, the hospitality one guy, along the way, the hospitality yeah. in Mongolia so these, and Tibet, it's amazing. These people make us feel humble, make me feel humble. They do a lot to wipe out memories of other people. Who have lost respect for humanity that's what uh yeah. matcha one of the guys with these long names so yeah so they they make it to lhasa and that's not the end and by the way let's let's just clarify why india why india during world war ii because it's british control and they, and they can speak right. english you know smith yeah. that's in smith's mind okay is like get me someplace to an english speaking and then i'll take it from there you know they, yeah, they well, talk about churchill and what, they escaped from the Soviet gulag. I think it was it was nineteen forty. Uh, yeah. So the Soviet Union was allied with Nazi Germany at that time. Now the the Nazi troops invade Russia in June of forty one, but they don't know about this. It happens while they're walking, but they don't know. They're in the they're walking. Good point. The There's no road. news. Let's just keep keep in the context, yeah, Andy. Yeah. There was no news yeah. since they all got captured, right. so they're wondering what's going on. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't know what's going on with the war, but as far as they know, the Soviets are still allied with the Nazis and consequently enemies of the British. Uh, and so the, yeah. the, 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 the British are not going to turn us back to, to their enemies, the Soviets. Now, in the meantime, yeah. uh, you know, the Nazis invade Russia and Russia becomes allies with, with Britain and the, and the United States is drawn into the war. But even so, the British are very unlikely to, to turn these, you know, these Polish army officers who were innocent of any wrongdoing to turn them over to, to the Soviets. Uh, and the Soviets had mm-hmm. no idea where they are. And as far as the Soviets are concerned, I, I think these guys are dead. So there's no, you yeah. know, there's no reason for the, yeah. you know, anyway. No yeah. manpower. There's no need to waste manpower uh, searching for these, yeah, escapees. Because right. the elements will yeah. kill them. You know, it's just that right. simple. Plus, mm-hmm. plus we don't want, if you're the commandant, you don't want your superior officers in Moscow to even know about it. Because, that's right. You know, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You 
yeah. possi- these guys escape from the camp first of all, and the possibility that they they're still alive and and that they escape successfully. No, you don't want you don't want yeah. your superiors to know about. It. But anyhow, so they, they, the the foothills of the Himalayas are in that part of the world. Now we're back oh, to the yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah, it's winter, and we're climbing at elevation, and yeah, back in the brutal you know cold conditions and climbing. These guys aren't mountaineers, and even the even the nope. foothills of the Himalayas are you know are towering peaks. And by the yep. way, I want to say one thing. One thing that uh, made me doubt Roberts' story was that he claims. Oh, the abominable the snowman. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> now that strikes me as as as, as BS. You know, first, first of all, I don't know if there are <laughs> such creatures. Do you do you know have has, has has that claim ever been corroborated by any? Uh, uh, not, yeah. not that I know no. of. I could be wrong, Come on. <laughs> but that, that's, that, that there is such a creature. But if those creatures, the, the, the second point is if those creatures existed, they would stay as far away from human beings as they can. They know human beings, you know, animals, wild animals sense human beings are dangerous. Uh, and they'd be way up in the mountains. Yeah. They wouldn't be down in the foothills near human villages and, you know, and, and, you know, and stuff. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that's just, that, that, that's, that did not, the rest of the story rings true for me. That part, I said, wait, wait a minute. You're either you're either making this stuff up, or you or you were so far gone from exhaustion and starvation that you hallucinated. You, you know, yeah. you'll see these creatures. The one part, Andy, the one part where it's relevant, where Rawitz claims it's relevant, is that there there were a few of. I think there were. A few I can't remember now if there were a few of them or just one, but it blocked their path. Yeah, there path. were a few. There was there, there was several of them. There were there were a yeah. few of them, and they felt like we can't go that way, so it changed their route, and they lost one more. The the yeah. uh, now was only th- so the last one. The next one died. So because he Sergeant, attributed Sergeant it to Blukowicz, if, if right. They, right, if they were going Blukowicz straight, was, they would have. Yeah. And they yeah, tell him he would have been an architect. If he was alive, he would have been an architect. They, they even remember like the careers that these men were on. It's not like they wanted to be British P- Polish officers. No, they, they they were defending you know their their land. But they all had engineers and and they want right. they had ambitions. And you know you think of a Howard Rourke and what could happen to him in this you know in this situation. Uh, you know lost lost to the elements trying to escape. Right. So sad. Right. I, yeah, it is. But I'll say this: if if Roberts wanted to, you know, show a reason for why they had a detour, you know, that you know around their chosen route, and and that caused the death of Sergeant mm-hmm. was it Lukovitz, I think, or so, something like that. Yeah, which is another step. Yeah. He went over. He, he went over the, the precipice, and they never found his yeah. body. He could have found the more plausible one than the abominable snowman. It could have been a towering peak looming in their path that they had a detour around, uh, rather than rather yeah. than you know, bring in these 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 mythical creatures. So so, uh, yeah. but anyhow, it's a detail. It's a yeah. detail in the story, you know. Yeah. Uh, and they mm-hmm. keep going. They just keep going. And they're they afraid to through. close their eyes. They can't breathe. They're up in the mountain. Oh, they, right. they, there's no oxygen. They can't breathe. But they're like, we can't. We can't sleep. We can't slow down. We can't constant movement. Yeah. You know, life is right. a process they spend the of self generated action. Right, they sta- stand right. up together, yeah. prodded each other to stay away because you know sleep in no in that kind of cold conditions is death. You freeze to death quickly. You know, uh, yeah. you know, in, yep. when you sort of have to keep each other, they are standing in the bitter cold and the wind. You know, and I don't remember if it was snowing or whatever it was, but yeah, you know, they're prodded each other, stay awake, stay awake. Ah, oh, they're exhausted. Uh, and they keep going, mm-hmm. and they just, they keep yeah. going, and 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 four of them down to four, four of them, them yeah, down, yeah, four of them reach in India, reach in India. Uh, they see some British, you know, troops walking in the distance, and Smith goes up to them, and he says, you know, one of the great greatest lines, you know, gentlemen, we are safe, uh, and. They're like ecstatic. They're dancing. They're hugging. It's like a man. They're doing the polka. <laughs> How about that, Andy? Because they're Polish, so they're dancing the polka. <laughs> right. How's that for a visual? You know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But you know, and, and and of course they spend like a month in a hospital. Uh, because, well, I mean, you think everything is good, this. right? You think everything is good, and they're like, "Oh, we'll give you some, you know, tin cans of peaches and stuff," but. You have lice, you have this, you have that, and we gotta, 
you know, we got to clean you up before we go and uh, let you check in. And they're like, it's only a couple miles. Can you make it? And we're like, well, you kidding? We just walked miles. 4, miles. <laughs> you, are you kidding me? We'll definitely do miles. that. And yeah. they're level gorging terrain themselves. And decent weather. They're gorging themselves yeah. and they assume, one would think, the reader, me as the reader would think, hey, yeah, it's over. No, for a month, Rawitz is out of it. He's having nightmares. He's he's storing his bread under his bed, and he goes on sleepwalking journeys, and all the, you know all the psychological stuff is now coming back to them. He thinks he's out for two days, and they tell him no, a month. And Smith had recovered about a week earlier, and then the two other uh, yeah, Polish well, doctors, officers similarly. The doctors tell him you're going to be yeah. very sick. You know, you get, yes. your, your guard is let down or whatever after you after you've yeah. you you made this this journey and your body, four thousand miles. One, you're exhausted. Two, you've been you've been yeah. starved. Three, you've been ex suffering from exposure. So you know, I, I'm sure the doctors pump these guys up with antibiotics when they're lying in bed and giving them you know giving them good food and water. And yeah, it took them a month. Mm -hmm. These guys a month to recover. Yeah. And uh, and at the end, Roberts Roberts wants to go join the Polish army and fight. He would, he's go gonna, back. He's gonna have to go fight. back to war. Yeah, he's got to fight. The, yeah, he have to fight the Nazis. That probably would rather fight the Soviets, given what the Soviets did to him. Yeah. But the Soviets yeah. are now now you know, they're ostensibly their allies. But but anyway, the yeah. Nazis are a good second choice because they ravaged Poland also. Um, so mm -hmm. he, he's he's. Uh, and and he, he he departs at the end. He said he and Smith, he and Smith say their goodbyes. Right. At the we'll end. see you in Warsaw. You know, someday we'll meet in Warsaw, uh, not knowing what was going on there. And look after yourself. That was the last thing. Look after yourself, Slav. That's the last uh, time Smith encountered him. Afterwards, none of none of the four ever reunited. Uh, they just went their separate ways. Rawitz ended up going to the UK, Nottingham is where he lived his final decades in life, became a reporter. Uh, then he wanted to tell this story. You know, we've mentioned this, Andy, in the past when we talk about like World War II veterans. They don't say, they, the horrors that they have experienced, yeah. they're not rushing to print you know, these kinds of things. I'm sure there are some sensationalists who, who want that kind of stuff. But but I can understand not wanting this story to get out initially and just regrouping mentally and starting a new life over in a new country in the, in the UK. And sure enough, 1956, um, the story is, is uh, you know, again, we're staying with it. This guy, Ron, uh, Ronald Dowling, uh, was the ghostwriter. Roberts had told him his story and puts it, you know, puts it into print. Do you think it became a bestseller? Do you think hungry minds wanted to learn about this kind of story and be inspired the way you and I were when, when we read about it? Of course, it was like just immediately a blo you know blockbuster uh, book, and then gained traction. And then, sure enough, uh, Rawitz. Uh, 2004, may, you know, he lived, uh, actually, uh, Elliot, we can put the picture of him later in life <clears throat> now, if you don't mind. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So this is him as a journey. He's a reporter. He lived out at the, uh, you know, the end of his life as a reporter writing about, uh, you know, still allegiance to Poland for children's orphanages. He would go around speaking, you know, about his story and collect money and send it, uh, to Poland. And then there's the controversy of, yeah, how factual is this? Did it, was it somebody else's story? Was it a compilation? And again, today we're not deciding that. We're just, we're going with it for the purposes right. of just sharing. I don't think, I don't think there's, I don't think there's, I don't think there's enough evidence to decide it conclusively anyway. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, but yeah, you're right. And, and. Part of the tragedy, well, it's well, there's a triumph, but part, it still there's this tragic element. Actually, actually, first thing I want to say is I think PTSD takes different forms, you know, post traumatic yes. stress disorder. Yes. Uh, and uh, these guys had been in combat, but that's probably not even the worst of it. This this experience is brutal, you know, and losing Christina mm -hmm. and losing, you know, some of your friends is just, just being, you know, the, the being brutalized by the Soviets the whole time they were in the Soviet Union. Um, mm -hmm. you know, from the, the originally being tortured and then the long uh, journey by train you know, under the brutal conditions you described and then the walk 
yeah. up to the camp and then the escape, you know, and the 4,000 mile walk to India. Uh, so I can see why it might take Robert's years before, like you said, to regroup before he's ready to, to tell this story. It's 15 mm -hmm. years from, 19, from 1941 to 1956. But also, Part of the tragedy here is, you know, see, I see you in Warsaw, but we don't, but he, Smith and, and Roberts have no way of knowing that after the war, you know, the Soviets will have conquered Eastern Europe. And, um, yeah. you know, you, you, you got to be crazy to want to try to go to Warsaw. You'll never get out again. Well, yeah. they, these guys especially right. can't because they're escapees from the Soviet gulag. So they can't go, yeah. to, they can't go with you know, mm -hmm. a Soviet bloc country. And it's not till 1989. 40, 44 years later, that, wow. that Poland's mm -hmm. a free, a free country, <clears throat> and, the, and the communists have been yeah. have been overthrown. So, in the in the movie version, by the way, it's touching because you know uh, he he wants to go get back, his he wants to get back to his wife, Roberts. In the movie version, yeah. she, she she's tortured by the the communists, and and she has to she has to you know yeah. confess. Well, confess. She has to she has to could see to their lies that her husband's a spy. Yes. You know, she's sobbing, yeah. you know, but they're torturing her. Mm -hmm. You can't, can't blame her. Yeah. Uh, Ayn Rand said morality ends at the point of the gun, and she's right. 100% of yes. the blame lays on, on the mm -hmm. communists. They're torturing her. And he tells, during the long walk in the movie version, he tells Smith, I think it was, a he says, I got to get home. Don't you understand? My wife will never forgive herself. I'm the only one yes. who can forgive her. That's right. Got to get home. Yeah. Very touching. And you yeah, see it. The, you're at right. The end, you know, he's walking and he's walking. He can't go. They lived in Warsaw. He can't go to Warsaw. It's not until 1989 yeah. or 1990 he goes to Warsaw. He goes to the house. This is not very believable, but it's a happy ending. And she's there. His wife is there, same house. <coughs> and and they reunite after almost 50 years. Um, you know, yeah. They're in their 20s now. They're in their 70s. But they, you know, they're, they're reunited. And he's able. He, he, he forgives her. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, she's got mm -hmm. nothing to be forgiven for. <laughs> it's the communists that you know that that you know that torture her. They're the ones that would need. True, to but the guilt. Her. He knows the guilt yeah. that she's that she is <laughs> yeah. feeling. And yes, in, absolutely, a, absolutely in the right. book, absolutely. as as opposed to the film, the way back. By the way, is the title of the film. Right. I can't remember if you said that, Andy, but um, but in the book, his wife dies. You know, she's she's left in Poland and his his all, all of his values are gone. And this is why at the end he feels so lonely. He's like, everyone is gone. All my values, even these people I just spent these last like 18 months with, you know, they're all going their separate way. And how do I desolation? I think that's the last word in, in, in the novel. Yeah, that's in, a, in the yeah, book that, is that's a good, good point. No, not, it's not the case that all these guys were Poles. The one guy was Lithuanian and they were from, yes. but they were all, all Eastern Bloc. Yeah, all Eastern Bloc after Blocks. the war. They they all came from yeah. countries Which that fell were under the controlled Soviets. by the communists after yeah, yeah right yeah. were conquered by the Soviets so they couldn't go home you know and they couldn't, they couldn't reunite go in in their homelands and so you know Roberts went to England and I don't know where even Smith went to America he, he's an American I don't know where the where the other two where, you know, where the other two guys went yeah you know, they they couldn't meet they yeah, couldn't on, meet on, in Warsaw they, they, they couldn't go home yeah they couldn't meet in Warsaw they couldn't go home. So, but one other thing, yeah, Andy, they, this is my this is my last point, is Smith, from the get go, once they know he's an American, everybody looks at him differently because that is the ideal. It's, it's so far he takes command. He has free will. They, sadly, you know, growing up in Europe where there's a collectivist mindset and basically you live for the state to one degree or another. That's why Rawit says immediately after everything is done, I'm going back because that's my job. That's my duty. And Smith, it would have been nice if he just said, look, you have nothing there. Come with me to America. You'll start all over. You'll, you'll make, you, you'll make a life for yourself with what, with your experience, you know, you have skills and, and right. so what I like about the book is that they, which I don't definitely do not like about the film because Ed Harris was like a cynic, uh, he, he, as, as Mr. Smith, I, I, I did, I definitely thought that was miscast the way they portrayed him. But in the, in the book, Smith is American and he towers above them in, in so many ways because he is this individualist. He has the American mindset that yeah I, I i will do this and get me to where there are english-speaking people even though i speak russian and i and i'll get us out of here 
Right, right. And I think we have, and by the way, Mr. Ravitch, you are looking very savvy road there. Very, you know, yes. very GQ, <laughs> yeah. very GQ, uh -huh. right? Very elegant. And I think we've done your mm -hmm. book and your, and your story justice, you know, Mr. Ravitch. Yes. And I want to thank you for writing this story, whether it's fiction mm -hmm. or whether it's, you know, a historically accurate account or whether it's embellishment of historically accurate story. I don't know. Truthfully, don't care uh, because I love what well, I love the heroism yes. of you. Know, I, I, I love the heroism of uh, move it this way. There you go. Thank you, Elliot. Yeah. Love the heroism in the story. Strongly recommend The Long Walk by Slavomir Roberts to any hero worshiper. And I think we mm -hmm. can, I think we could salute Mr. Roberts and Absolutely. Mr. Smith and, 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 and all the others who survived yes. this harrowing journey. And, and Christina and salute too. Those, mm -hmm. Yeah, salute those who mm -hmm. did not survive, including the lovely yeah. Miss Christina, and uh, Robert, mm -hmm. and everybody out there in Hero Land. I think it's time to say I hope you yeah. get everybody here lead a, a have a more heroic day and let's strive to lead a more heroic life. And we'll be back next Absolutely. week to, to discuss more heroes once again on the Hero Show. So bye everybody. Bye bye.